they'll come. Someone's staring at me. Why? <laughs> It's my maestro and the kid Hi you guys, I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to do a video about tips and tricks about how to handle your car. I'm not a mechanic, but I have a really old car and since I first got it, things have happened over the years that have helped me kind of learn um, how to handle my car. So I thought this would be a good video for ladies who don't really know about cars and it gives them anxiety. Um, I just wanted to share some of the things that I've learned over the years. So let's get into it. My first tip is to be positive about your car. Thoughts permit energy and your car will feel it too. So if you're stressed or you're having road rage, your car is gonna feel that. Just believe me, um, it's happened to me plenty of times. So when you think about your car, just be super positive because you never know when it's gonna break down, trust me. A couple weeks ago, my car broke down and I was thinking all these negative thoughts like, you know what, my car hasn't broken down in a while. You know what happened the next day? My service engine light turned on, transmission fluid was spilling everywhere, so it's real. So that's my first tip, just be positive. My second tip is, let's say your battery is super low on charge and it's on its way out, but you're not ready to buy a new one yet. Um, you can charge your battery at AutoZone. They won't charge you anything. If you have an AutoZone near you, just go there. I'm, I'm not sure about um, other places like Pep Boy or Jiffy Lube, but AutoZone does it for free. And they will charge it till full, and once it's done, they'll call you. They'll also check your service engine light and tell you what's wrong with your car. So that's really helpful. They'll come... Someone's staring at me. Why? My third tip is, sis, get AAA. It's only 50 bucks a year and you get four, up to four chances. It's, it's a freaking lifesaver. They'll help you if you're locked out, if you need gas, if you need a tow, but uh, the tow is only free up to seven miles. After that, you have to pay per mile, which I think is about like $10 a mile. I can't remember. I had an accident and I was super far from home. I was at least like 30 miles from home. So, um, I had to pay for the rest of the way and it came about to like, I want to say a hundred dollars, yikes, but it was still a lifesaver. It was better than being stranded or leaving my car there, you know? Sometimes the AAA people are super nice. They won't even, they won't even like count it as your chances. If you guys vibe, if you guys get along, sometimes we'll just let you go for free. <laughs> this is my fourth tip. Some people have a really hard time of knowing when to ch change their oil. Some people go months and months and months without changing their oil and that's terrible for your car because if you drive without oil you can burn up the engine and you won't have a car period these are ways to know how um, you can change your oil so um, for me my car i have to change my oil either every three months or every three thousand miles so sometimes i go farther than three months but still i haven't reached the miles i need to change my oil so sometimes um my car usually tells me so in my car i have this um oil lamp emoticon um usually when i press the gas um it flashes on and that usually tells me it's almost about time to change my oil so just look in your ma manual i'm pretty sure most cars have this that's a pretty good warning sign that you need to change your oil soon if you haven't checked your oil under the hood anyways that's that's like my first indication like oh okay i need to get my my butt to walmart or something to go change it you can also check the oil yourself it's good to check the oil yourself um, when you're getting gas or um, let's say you're at the car wash or you're putting air in your car you can just you know just pop up the hood and check the oil yourself you can even check in the manual to see which um, dipstick you need to check usually they're different colors so because you, you don't want to confuse it with the transmission oil dipstick we're gonna get to that in a minute but yeah you can check it uh, yourself I'm gonna uh, link a video in the description and also in the eye where you can also uh, know how to do that I would show you guys what that if you don't want to spend an arm on a leg on an oil change, you can always go to Walmart. It's only $19.99 for the most basic oil change and they'll also clean your filter, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And also if there's anything else wrong with their car, they'll write it in the receipt because they also check tire pressure, they, they check if you have any leaks, They um, sometimes they vacuum, sometimes they put some coolant in there if you need to. But for the most basic oil change, you can always count on Walmart for the most cheapest charge so this was a big issue i was dealing with in the last two weeks this is one of the reasons i wanted to make a video on this because most ladies and i don't know 
most ladies don't really know about this and gents i'm not gonna i'm not gonna discriminate you guys um most people don't know when they're having transmission issues it they usually let it go all the way until their car dies and you don't want to do that you want to always be on top of this transmission issues can go from being as little as a leak or being as bad as replacing the whole transmission you don't want to let it to go to that extent because it's expensive it's like a thousand dollars to replace your transmission so these are some uh, tips and tricks to catch it early because when you nip, nip some of these things in the bud you won't have to pay for more of it later which was what happened to me i didn't i didn't need a new transmission but i definitely spent a lot of money on transmission fluid first indication is of you having transmission issues is that you find a leak under your car okay some leaks aren't always the transmission fluid so you have to check you have to you have to move your car and you have to smell it. Transmission fluid usually is like a sticky oily consistency and it's of a cherry red color. You'll you'll spot it right away and it smells just like oil. But if it's not that, then it could be coolant, it could be water, it could be your motor oil, but that's how you can tell apart the oils. If it's super red, it's like a super cherry red, like you won't miss it. That's how you know your transmission is leaking under your car. Another way of knowing you're having transmission issues is that when you're driving, your car is slipping. Slipping means Slipping means that when you're driving and you push on the gas, you notice that you're not really going anywhere, but your RPMs are going crazy. And it feels like you're like, you're like driving in mud or sand or something sticky. Slipping is one of the indicators that you're you're starting to have transmission issues. To fix a slipping issue, it could mean you, you're either super low on fluid or you're, you have greater problems on your hands once you check the, the fluid. So if you feel your car is slipping like that, I want you to stop and I want you to check your, your transmission fluid. So I'm gonna link a, a video on how to do that in the description and I'm also gonna link it in the eye. You don't wanna be driving your car while it's slipping because it can damage your transmission further. Another indicator is hard shifting. So hard shifting is when your car is having trouble shifting gears and you'll feel it, like it's not smooth. Like it's like when, you, when you, let's, say your, let's say your car is automatic, when it's shifting gears, you shouldn't be feeling it. It should be like butter. It should be like you're going from one gear to the other. You shouldn't feel like you're being jolted everywhere you know okay also another indicator uh, let's say you've put your car in park and it's time to go right so you put your car in reverse and it hesitates to reverse like you're pressing on the gas nothing is happening and all of a sudden you jolt back in reverse that means you're either low on fluid or there's something greater going on and you need to check it ASAP. Another tip is that you find out you have all some of these problems but you're just low on fluid. Highly, highly suggest not to leave this for the last minute when you truly need transmission fluid because when you're desperate, you tend to go to, to the nearest option. Usually the nearest option has the most expensive equipment like let's say the gas station let's say you're stranded somewhere and um there's a there you find you find your low on fluid and there's a gas station right there and that's your only option you don't want to leave it leave that to be your only option because transmission fluid at the gas station is 13 dollars sis 13 dollars is a lot you rather uh stock up on trans your own transmission fluid from either o'reilly's or walmart because they retail to about five to six dollars each so with that 13 dollars you could have bought two two transmission fluids you know so you don't want to go broke over this like my car my car takes four quarts so when i was having this issues and i was desperate and i wasn't moving anywhere i spent about 56 dollars yeah 56 dollars on transmission fluid from the gas station you don't want to leave it till that extent so once you notice all these issues and you're and you're um and, and you need to take yourself to the mechanic, make sure you stock up and when you're ready to go to the mechanic, you're already stocked up so you can just put it in there, go to the mechanic so they can tell you what's wrong. Let's talk about funner topics. We're done with transmission. I find that the best and cheapest way to keep the interior of my car clean is to get my cleaning supplies from Dollar Tree. They have everything you need and it won't break the bank, trust me. And they last a really long time, longer than buying stuff from Target. Like I, I bought Glade from Target, no good. It, it finishes in like what, three, three or five days when you need that for a whole month. And they usually have really good smelling car fresheners like 
mint or cherry I showed you guys in my last vlog I usually like getting the new car smell even though my car is like 17 years old but mint cherry works too so that's what I would recommend my first tip is to get a charcoal odor eliminator it's super simple it's super cheap it's only a dollar from Dollar Tree of course and you can keep it under your seat because um, that helps with condensation let's say you live in a super um, humid climate or or it's summer and it gets super hot and you don't want your seats to be moldy and stinky from all the moisture in your car you can get the charcoal odor eliminator and you can put it under your seat and it just absorbs it does all the hard work for you and it doesn't ruin your seats my second tip is definitely to get wet wipes wet wipes save lives like you can clean your dashboard you can clean your console just get wet wipes you never know when you need them my next tip is to keep track of the air in your tires every time you're at the gas station just make sure um, your your PSI is at the level you can check your PSI um, either in your car manual or on the side of your door my car has um, a little like info thingy info tab on the side of the door where it says okay my PSI should be 40 each tire so make sure your car is always at a level where it needs to be because you don't want to be driving on a low PSI because when you do that your car is working harder to move the car because it's heavy right so I'll say always keep your PSI at a good level so you're not wasting gas thank you guys so much for watching I hope some of these tips helps you guys um, like I said I'm not a mechanic but um, these are just some of the things I've learned over the years if you're new here welcome to the fam if you're already here thanks for coming back and yeah see you in the next one